Now, in this book, I'll read it to you right now to give you the crux of the Rig Veda. And I, this, is a, this is a good one, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, edited by W. Period, y. Period, Evans Wentz, W-I-N-T-Z. And in this book here, I got it right here. I want to read it to you so you'll know what this thing says. Look at this. On page 67, enlightenment results, no, enlightenment results from the realizing the unreality of existence. Enlightenment, this is the crux of the book. Enlightenment results from realizing the unreality of existence. Love, lift, life. We touch into your mind, body, and soul. Number one. One way to help you along is to understand, well, if this is an illusion and this is a dream, then nothing really matters based on how you behave. But we're talking about a thought condition. And that's just what it is. Um, there's a good book. You want to learn about the Matrix? Well, I'll put one on your ass. Oh, yeah, you want to learn about some goddamn Matrix? They got a white woman from the University of Chicago. All she does is translate damn texts, and her ex and her her specialty is uh, her specialty is the the Vedic texts and all of that stuff, the Mahabharata, the Ramayana, and the, the the Rig Veda, the Upanishads, and she is the foremost authority on this thing. You want to learn about some Matrix? I give you some out of scholar your ass. You probably take a year have to study this book. It's called Dreams, Illusions, and Other Realities. Dreams, Illusion, and Other Realities by Wendy O'Flaherty. Dreams, Illusions, and Other Realities by Wendy O'Flaherty. Her name is actually Wendy Dunnigo O'Flaherty, but when they type it up, Wendy O'Flaherty. Uh, yeah. Um, the name is O apostrophe F L A H E R T Y. O'Flaherty. O apostrophe F L A H E R T Y. Wendy O'Flaherty, University of Chicago Press. And this book is called Dreams, Illusions, and Other Realities. And there's, there's one in there in a text where they talk about this sage that went to sleep. And he dreamed he was a woman. Then the woman dreamed that she was a doe or a deer, and the deer dreamed that it was a flea, and the flea dreamed that it was a weed, and the weed dreamed that it was a bee, and on and on until you got a whole goddamn civilization. And then one of the animals dreamed that it's Rudra, and Rudra is the, a form of Siva, which is the Hindu Horus. And then when, when it dreams it's Rudra, Rudra realizes he's dreaming, and he wakes up, and all this shit disappears. And that's how it is in your mind. You see? It's only a dream. You see? But when a God dreams, the reality is stronger. You know that book, the Spirit's book? Everybody tell you get that book, the Spirit's book. You know who the book is by? Alan Kardec. Alan, what's it? Alan Kardec. Alan Kardec. In that book, they talk about they have these, 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 these entities on the other realm. And they be like, you know, they be like, oh man, I get, I, I'll incarnate down there on that damn earth. Oh man, I, man, if I get down there, man, I'll be running shit. They be like, man, I'll be, I'll be running shit. I'm, I'm gonna go down there and rule. Soon as they get down there and they get in that damn brain and they lose their mind as a little baby, <laughs> shit, they end up about 18 years later and shit, you know, and I'm standing around some damn club and shit with a bull can in their hand. Don't know their ass from a hole in the ground. This is the same person a few years later telling me how they're going to get down there and do some shit. So when the God starts to dream, it's powerful. That's why you can't wake up from the shit.
What up, what up, what up, my people? Dreamwise here for another one. Today we're gonna fly into this B movie. Remember, lovelifelife.com. Go get your spiritual tools and turn up on your spiritual practices. Statues, crystals, and I say cards. The world famous sachet cards. Loveliftlife.com. Yeah, and like and subscribe to these videos, man. Share the wealth. Fresh out of college, Barry the Bee finds a prospect of working with honey and inspiring. He flies outside the hive for the first time and talks to a human, breaking a cardinal rule of his species. Barry learns that humans have been stealing and eating honey for centuries, and he realizes that his true calling is to obtain justice for his kind by suing humanity for theft. Now, I did a recording on this movie before and the audio was low and kind of sucked, real bad quality. So I wanted to revisit this movie so you can have a clear understanding of what consciousness is. So make sure you go watch the movie and listen to this thing the whole way through. Barry is on a quest to find out who and what he should be. And then he gets bombarded with another path. The battle to prove he exists and the battle to prove he has a voice. Why does the European want our melanin? He wants to desperately bring society to shame about the people taking the God's melanin or creative force. Now remember, watch the movie and fill me in on what you see in the comments. I'm gonna go through this real quick. B equals black people or melanin people. Honey equals money. Flower equals power. Pollination, melanation. So B is black people or melanin people. Honey equals money or create a physical gift to the world. Flower equals power. Pollination, melanation. See, the ritual is not about you spotting these things out. The ritual is about you getting distracted and losing your way in your work as Barry gets distracted by the European love interest. At the beginning of the movie, he finishes his B college and it's time for him to find his footing in this society. He doesn't have the heart to conform to an average bee worker. He wants to understand himself and what makes him tick. He wants to explore the world and see what powers he has within him. Just like the majority of us that first year getting out of college, you don't know what you want to do with your life. After we get tricked into the whole college thing, programmed to be upstanding citizens, we get home and realize that our degrees ain't worth a damn. Now, I'm not saying don't get a degree. Get that paper if that's your mission, but use it as a tool. That doesn't have nothing to do with who you are. Like, you ever notice when you're talking to some of our melanated brothers and sisters, they start off with what they do for a living and how many degrees they got. <laughs> hey, if that's your plight, more power to you. But I'm talking to the gods. When I got home from college, I was just like Barry searching to find myself and what I enjoyed in life. You know, I knew about Bobby Hemmett, but I couldn't hear him. Whenever I would listen to Bobby, I would hear the Afrocentric stuff. 
Bobby used to tap into so many different concepts, but I couldn't hear his real message. I wasn't listening to what he was saying. My inner ear melanin was out of whack. I was a Tariq Nasheed and Umar Johnson of the world ass nigga. I was big into the Afrocentric thing. Got lost in hidden colors energy and fight the man. I was a black power ass nigga. Death to white supremacy ass dude. I thought that was consciousness. And I thought I was woke because my friends didn't know anything about melanin and how we were the first beings on earth. It got so bad for me, I opened up a store selling dashikis and shea butter and shit. <laughs> Egyptian trinkets and shit. Tripping with myself. Boy, I was in the world so heavy. Nigga, I was in the world and of the world. Fighting for everybody else. But not fighting for myself. See, I had to let go and let God. Not until I fell in a panic did Bobby start to make sense to me. Barry had the same energy I had as he was trying to sue the white race for theft. They were stealing the bees' honey. They were stealing the black people's money. Or basically creative physical gift to the world. Barry was in an uproar and had to make sure his voice was heard. He wanted all the bee farms to stop and all the bee slave workers to stop being gassed with the chemtrails. Let me ask y'all a question though. If you are white and knew you had no existence, what would you do? If you knew that if we don't keep these black people under mind control, our existence would come to an end what would you do? And obviously it's not all of the European controlling this thing. It is just that 1% that controls your media, food, neighborhoods, and so on. They're trying to survive. They're trying to survive in a world that they know if we wake up and start wielding our power, Oh, it's over. They're doing what they're supposed to do. It's time for us to do what we're supposed to do. And fighting the man and worrying about their agenda is not pushing that light body inside of us. See, Barry ends up winning, proving his case and freeing the world. All the bees were free to do what they wanted. And that pollination Melanation stopped, destroying the planet. Barry won and he felt his victory was bittersweet. See, in the movie, they're saying, okay, black people, here's your world back. Now what? You still don't know thyself. You still don't know knowledge of self. So what does that matter? Occult, metaphysics, and spiritual concepts is the real journey within. And the only journey we're supposed to be on at this time and space. Barry starts feeling bad and starts to restore the world by getting all the other bees to start pollinating it again. He ends up at the end becoming a lawyer and jumping right back into the system. The distraction leads him from trying to get to know himself to working in the society and conforming back to humanity. Your melanin is a strong and powerful tool within you. The problem is most of our people are using it wrong. They don't know or they don't care to use it to tap into the deeper aspects of themselves. 
To actually do the spiritual work and go within is a rare commodity in this quote unquote woke community. You are different. You are the one that sits down and understands that this illusion has nothing to do with you. Keep smelling the flowers, man. And power up your melanin through the love of self. Dream wise.